Basically, track fusions are highly actionable driver alterations that are found across many different cancers. When I think about how common track fusions are, there are two major groups. The first major group is a group of four rare cancers where there's a very high frequency of track fusions. These are mammary analog secretory carcinoma, secretory breast carcinoma, congenital fibrosarcoma, and congenital mesoblastic nephroma. The second major group is a group of much more common cancers like lung cancers, gastrointestinal cancers, melanoma, and thyroid cancers where the frequency is much lower. We now have two first-generation TRAC inhibitors. These are targeted therapies that are very active for any patient that has a cancer with one of these TRAC fusions. These two drugs are larotrectinib, a very selective TRAC inhibitor, and entrectinib, which is a potent TRAC inhibitor, but also works against other targets like ROS1. Both drugs have shown very good activity in the clinic, with an objective response rate of 81% for larotrectinib in more than 100 patients. And for entrectinib, an objective response rate of 57% for more than 50 patients. These responses were very durable. For example, for larotrectinib, the median duration of response and the median progression-free survival have not been reached. We also know that patients that have brain metastases can respond very nicely to either of these therapies. So the punchline here is, because these drugs are very active, it's important to screen for or look for track fusions. The best way to find a track fusion is by doing next generation sequencing, preferably with both a DNA and RNA pass, because RNA is the best way to maximize finding a track fusion. Of course, in environments where there's no access to next generation sequencing, there are other tests that could be used like immunohistochemistry or FISH. Now, when patients progress on these TRAC inhibitors, thankfully we know a little bit about resistance. And like ALK and ROS1 fusions, these cancers can develop kinase domain mutations, for which there are two other drugs that are next-generation TRAC agents that can work very well to re-establish disease control. These drugs are LOXO195, and repotrectinib, and thankfully both are on ongoing phase one clinical trials. And the basic message is, if you have a patient that goes on a first generation pill, thereafter develops resistance, this patient would now have another option in terms of a second pill that can then work to keep the cancer under control. The last thing I'll say is that larotrectinib is already approved by the US FDA for the treatment of any adult and pediatric cancer that harbors a track fusion regardless of cancer type. And this was a really landmark approval because it's the first time a regulatory body has approved a targeted therapy for a genomic signature that's agnostic of cancer type.